400 years of modern science and industrial revolution resulted in uh, airplanes that crash, polluting cars, and houses, actually, that don't survive earthquakes. Well, we shouldn't be so critical about our scientists because, actually, they didn't have much time, maybe 200 years or so. In fact, nature had much more time, three billion years of evolution that resulted in super-performing materials. Take, for example, sequoia trees. They carry hundreds of tones for hundreds of years in harsh conditions in the sun, UV light, there is absolutely no plastic synthetic material that can survive such harsh conditions. But in fact, if you look very deep into the structure of this tree and try to understand what is it made of, what makes it so strong, surprisingly, it's a sugar. It's the same sugar we use in our tea. Well, in fact, not exactly the same. It's actually a polymer of that sugar called cellulose. Well, not exactly that. It's actually a fiber, a highly crystalline fiber of cellulose that is quite tiny, but rather long, about three to 400 nanometer in length, about five to 10 nanometer in width. And the funny thing that this thing is so strong, in fact, it is about 10 times stronger than steel. Yet, it's made of sugar. It's renewable. So it could be great if we had this wonderful material. And in fact, analysts believe that in 2020, nanocellulose, or nanocrystalline cellulose, as some people call it, CNC, is going to be one of the most important materials for the industry. Well, here's the problem. You can Google. You can eBay, you can even Alibaba. <laughs> you won't find it. And for a simple reason, because it's still not available commercially. So we at the Hebrew University decided a few years ago to develop a process, a cost-effective process, to manufacture this nanofiber, which is made of cellulose. So we were looking for a cheap source of raw material. And in fact, we found one. Actually, it's the waste of the pulp and paper industry. This material is a perfect source for us, and there is plenty of that. In fact, a lot of that. So much of that material that it actually covers our continent. Europe alone manufactures about 11 million tons of this waste annually. For them, or for us, it's an environmental problem. For us, it's a gold mine. We at the Hebrew University developed a process to manufacture in a cost-effective manner nanocellulose from uh, that waste. And together with our Swedish partners at Melodia, we developed an industrial scale process to make it. So what can we do with that? In fact, a lot of things. But one that you can see here is to make foams. Foams are very, very useful. So how do we make foam? We simply take the nanocellulose in a liquid crystal form, and we pour it into a mold. And then all we have to do is to freeze it. What happened is quite remarkable. When we freeze it, all of a sudden, these nanofibers self-assemble into a porous, very stiff, very strong material. And all you have to do is now just to melt the ice, remove the water, and all of a sudden you end up with a foam that can be very useful for lots of things. And in fact, there are many applications that can be used uh, in the land, in the aerospace, in the marine industry, in sandwich composites, to replace fossil oil-based materials like polystyrene, polyurethane, which are quite toxic and pollute our environment. Well, this is a very strong material that can be uh, quite useful. But in fact, it's not the only one that nature can provide us. Cat fleas, 
which comes from the animal kingdom, provide us another fascinating material. I don't know if, how many of you know that, but catfish has the ability to jump as high as 200 times their height. This is amazing. It's the equivalent of a person standing in the middle of Manhattan and in a single jump go to the top of the Empire State Building and even land safely. So how could they do it? Well, they developed this remarkable material, which is actually the perfect rubber. It's a protein called resilin. This resilin is so elastic and so remarkable, you can stretch it, you can press it, and it doesn't lose any energy to the environment by heat or by friction. It stores everything. And when we release it, snaps, everything goes back. So it's quite remarkable to have that perfect rubber. We could do a lot of things with that. But here's the problem. Cat fleas are jumpy. It's very difficult to catch them. <laughs> and if even you caught one, you don't have much, because it doesn't have much material. Cat fleas are tiny. But if you caught one, that's enough to take its DNA and clone the resilin gene into a less jumpy organism, like plant, for example. And that's exactly what we did. We actually cloned the gene that encodes for the resilin into plants. And now we can produce it in copious amounts. So what can you do with that? Well, you remember the foam from the nanocellulose, the stiff material? What would happen if you take a little bit of this resilin and add it to this foam? Can we change its mechanical properties? And the answer is yes. And I'm going to show you now a short video demonstrating. You can see here on the right-hand side, this is nanocellulose foam alone in water. So when we crush it, it doesn't jump back, simply because it's not elastic. On the left-hand side, the same thing, but with a little bit of resilin. Look what happened. And you can do it again. You can do it again and again and again. <laughs> and we'll do it again all the time. It comes back. So this is great. So what else we can do uh, with that wonderful material? Well, imagine that we can jump and ev every one of us can join the NBA. You know, future uh, materials. And this is not a joke. We're actually working on the next generation of, of sports shoes. But there are other things that we can do. Remember, if you take this nanocellulose and just by itself you dry it, what happens, it is a self assemble into a transparent, extremely strong film. This film is so strong, it is about two times stronger than epoxy glue. And that is without the dirty chemistry. There's only hydrogen bonding, clean chemistry in water. So that's amazing. The problem, that it's stiff. But hey, we have the resilin from the animal kingdom, from the insect. So now if we mix them together, that's what happened. We get a transparent, flexible uh, film that in fact, even better in its mechanical properties uh, uh, compared it to the NCC film alone. So it's tougher, it's more elastic, and it's still transparent. And there are a lot of things we can do with that material. You can just imagine, for example, transparent touch, uh, touch screens for smartphones, um, for computers, Windows, Windows, and more. Well, today, nowadays, we are using materials um, uh, that are coming from nature, like wood. But we're really limited in our construction to their shape, the shape of the logs that comes from the trees. But in fact, once we have the nanocellulose fiber, in the future, we will be able to, together with the elastic resilin in 3D printers to combine them in different proportions to get the appropriate mechanical properties. And we will be able to make really sophisticated architectures that are limited only by our imagination.
Well, a friend of mine once told me uh, that if you want a new idea, you should open an old book. In fact, the book is there, and it was written. It was written over three billion years of evolution on the DNA of life. All we have to do is really to read that DNA and make our progress from there. Let's not reinvent the wheel. Thank you. <laughs>